For today's project, I'm going to show you how to use Text Formatter to validate text field input. As you can see here, as we type, if we type in a valid number, I can see down here I'm printing out the actual key inputs. Here it'll actually stipulate if you've exceeded the maximum length. It'll also give you an error message here to stipulate that it's invalid input. It also validates and controls an operating system pace and turns text field pink. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm just going to go over the four constructors you can use with text formatter. The first one, we provide a value converter, which basically converts a value entered by the user into the appropriate data type required. The second one, in addition to this, you can provide a default value. And if the user doesn't enter anything, this default value is used. The third one also provides a unary operator. This will allow you to modify the user input as it's entered. The last constructor, which we're going to use in series, purely provides that filter so we can validate the user input as it's entered. Okay, we'll start the project. I'm using NetBeans. You can use whatever IDE you want to use. We'll go up to File, New Project, Java Ant, Java application, we'll click on next. Then we'll give the actual project a name. I'm going to call this project Java FX Text Formatter Validate Numbers. We'll click on finish. Now we're just going to enter in some code for the main. Uh, we'll fix up these errors later. We just need to set up a Java FX. We're going to add a new class. This is going to be the FXML controller. And we'll just enter in the code that we've required here. And now we're just going to hop over to Scene Builder. And we're going to create our FXML.FXML file, which is basically the stage that we're going to display for the input for the end user. So we're going to save this first into the project package folder and call it FXML controller. Now I'll go back over to NetBeans. We'll go to that actual new file and we'll paste in the code here. This code you can actually generate from Scene Builder. If you watch my other project on how to actually create a Java FX project, I'll show you how to set up everything and actually create your own project from scratch yourself. Now over here, we basically just have a label with an ID and we have a text field with an ID. Now back in NetBeans, over here on the FXML control, we're just gonna fix up these errors. So we're just gonna add the libraries that are required. Now that's the Java FX library. If you watch my video on how to set up Java FX, I'll show you how to set this up. And then we're just going to point it to the actual jar files, which is the actual class path for Java FX. Once again, watch my video, I'll show you how to set this all up. And then we're just going to set up the runtime. So this is the runtime for when we actually execute the actual program itself. Okay, we'll just uh, double check to make sure that all the areas have been fixed up. Uh, yep, everything's uh, looking good for all the Okay, now we'll actually run the program. Now, as you can see here, we've got a text box for the input. As a user inputs, we're displaying the input here as the key press, which is actually on the control itself. Now, we're also displaying down here the total control that's sent through, and also the key press that actually uh, triggered that control itself. Now, as, a, as we continue to type one, two, three, if we actually input an invalid whole number, you can see down here the total control change pass through and the event control that triggered that control itself. Now we can also have an error label down the bottom here, which is displayed. If we continue to type in, you can see those changes happening. If I go past the actual total stipulated maximum input, you can see we print out an actual uh, error label down the bottom there. And also we're actually preventing that key from being passed through the actual control itself. If you try and paste now, you'll see it passes through that total control. That actually is the total user input. 
but this will actually prevent that from happening using the regular expression, which will equate the whole total control input as being invalid and not allowing that control to pass through. As you can see here from the next input, that has now disappeared. I'll just basically go through and run through the code now quickly. Just to give you an idea how we created this project. So you can see here, we have basically got an actual reg regular expression that we've used down here and see if it matches. Um, up here, we've set up a unary operator, which we basically pass that uh, the filter once we've created it to the text formatter. And then we actually set that to the text field itself for the input to be validated under this text field. Here we have our unary operator, which is a functional in interface, which uh, basically takes a single argument from our lambda expression here. It just stores result set from everything we've done here. Here we get the complete new text, which is used on the control. And here we just get the text actually used on the control here. Uh, we're using the new text that's been entered to make sure that it still matches the pattern of a whole number. And we're just checking here to see if the length itself doesn't exceed the actual stipulated length. If it all matches, then we'll return the actual change itself to the actual unary operator. Uh, if it doesn't, then we actually set an error label. Uh, we set the actual text box to pink and we return null, which doesn't allow the actual character bit to be entered itself. Okay, we'll just look at all the code now. So don't forget to subscribe and subscribe on my website to receive all the code. Okay, to continue in this series, what we're going to validate next would be for decimal numbers. We're gonna do alphabetics, and we're also going to do emails. We'll also look at validating number plates, which will utilize all the controls passed through. I'll show you the rest in the continued series.